<coughs> oh God. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jody from Yoga by the Lake and this is my studio. Today I will be doing a review on a 20 minute morning yoga mobli 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 mobility and energy boost for the perfect start. Today I will be review. Today I will be reviewing 20 minute morning yoga, mobility and energy boost for a perfect start to the day, better than coffee by Boho Beautiful Yoga. Better than coffee. I have my coffee. We're going to discuss <laughs> we're going to discuss whether or not it was actually better than coffee. So just a little bit about what's going on with me today. I'm very sore. I'm always very sore. I do so much. We were digging up dirt over the weekend. We were filling in ditches around the driveway. I'm working my horse Caspian. I am practicing yoga on a regular basis. I'm exhausted. My body is super tight. So I did this practice after a three point something mile walk today around the lake. So I was warm. And I was looking for something that maybe could help to energize and move me into this nice space of just lengthening through some of the stiffness and soreness that's in my body. Now, a little bit about me. I am a 200 hour certified yoga teacher. I have a whole alphabet soup of certifications. Through my personal lens, I will be looking to review this yoga practice, just from the idea of would it work for my clients and my modalities? And is it something that I could recommend to the folks that I work with on a regular basis? Welcome to the beautiful island of Barbados. Today's morning yoga practice will be focused on enhancing mobility and boosting your overall energy. In this dynamic and invigorating yoga practice, we will flow through a series of gentle yet powerful yoga postures designed to awaken your body, increase flexibility, and ignite your inner vitality. Now, before we get started, I have to say I was having a touch of technical difficulty and my computer was having a hard time with the internet. I also was getting blasted with all this advertising right at the beginning. And uh, you see me kind of collapse in a puddle at that point because it was just one of those frustrating things that happens when you're taking a class on the computer versus in person. Although sometimes my classes don't work out totally in person, especially if we're down by the lake and somebody's lawnmower starts going, uh, that's always something so and opposite elbow to knee and open keep reaching over to the side so creating lots of space in the side okay let me start here by saying the introduction to this yoga practice was like I was starting in a movie I absolutely loved their opening sequence it was just this gorgeous like teacher, yoga student, we're moving into the classroom, which happens to be this gorgeous beach or oceanfront vista kind of gently. I actually really like this next posture that comes up where we're taking the elbow and moving it to opposite knee. That's something that I think my students would really enjoy. The background in here is just absolutely gorgeous. I wish I had just started with that because I think it would it would have helped me to drop into this practice In a lot more and open each time you open that elbow up just open through that side body as well creating lots of space in the intercostal muscles the muscles between your ribs good hold it here extending that top elbow reach a little bit further just open up through that center through that heart center and then sit back down onto your hips. And then that foot that was close. This was really great. The only thing I would have done is just be really careful of the cervical spine. There can be a little bit of uh, tension that happens during this as you start to put that head backwards. So I would have just made sure that that was prompted because injury can really occur. So everything started off pretty nicely. I love the warm up that was happening here. I didn't really understand this, this circle thing that was going on. Um, I don't usually push back that far. I think I finally got it at the end. She's way more active than I am through this, but that's probably because this is her brand of yoga. So she understands what the positions and postures would be for that and the specific flow. Come to center, 
arch the back. Exhale, round the spine, cat-cow. Inhale, arch the back. Exhale, tuck that chin to chest, round the spine. Inhale, arch. So I just wanna make something a little bit of a note here is her mat looks like it's about three, maybe even four inches thick because she's practicing outside. Um, this kind of posture, there's a lot of knee work that goes on, especially in the lunges. I would have suggested bringing in a blanket or a towel or something for a little bit more padding under the knees, at least once to give my students an idea that that was something that was necessary because her, she's super padded here, but I didn't have any of that padding. I practice with two mats. I usually practice with three. So it's just something to consider as you're going about it. If you feel any pressure or pain in the knee, always feel free to bring in any additional props that you might need. And once again, deep breath in, really extend through those shoulders, draw the shoulders away from the ear so you're keeping the neck nice and long here. Okay, high plank is great. And then she starts this flow and you watch my confusion sort of happen here. Uh, I just didn't know what was happening. It was like you had to put your knees down and then push back and then go forward and then push back again. Beautiful flow, gorgeous sequence. This has nothing to do with the actual sequence or the practitioner or the teacher herself. However, I find that um, it's the general pace that gets me. At some point, and I think it was when we started transitioning into chaturangas, I felt like I was in a swimming pool. Someone was telling me to go faster, do more, and I could barely keep up. And if you've ever felt that way, like you're just going and going and going through the postures, then that's a time to slow down, right? And if you practice on a regular basis, then it kind of makes sense. You get this flow. You understand what the next posture is going to be. I felt like as I was going through this particular sequencing that I just never really caught my breath. And I wonder if that's a common thing that kind of happens, especially when students first approach a practice that they get kind of in their head about, oh, well, my arm has to go here. My leg has to go here. And it's all about the asana and the posturing. And I practice often. So for me to not be able to really catch up with what's going on, it, it became like a complicated dance and I just ended up throwing my body into the postures instead of allowing them to do all that beautiful work in a slower and stiller class. So just something to think about. You know, if you're like that, if you feel like you're constantly trying to, to do more in your yoga, practice and that you can't ever really catch up. You're not really feeling it to the full uh, expression. Even this forward fold, for example, down here, I just really wanted to hang out because I feel so stiff anyway. Take that for yourself. I don't care if the teacher's going on a million miles an hour. You do you. You do your flow the best to your ability. You feel it in your body. And it really should be about you and spending time in your body. And if you have to skip a whole part to just sit in child's pose, or maybe you want to stay in this extended lunge, go there. Stay there. That's my only suggestion here. Good. From this position, palms together in front of your heart, Anjali Mudra. Begin to twist to your left. So this part here where we're in this low lunge with the knee down and we're in this twist, this is where I would have encouraged if you need a blanket underneath the knee, my knees were screaming through this. So here she has us kind of do these little lifts in the back of the leg. This is all about posture and balance here. If you notice her, she actually, she's moving her arm up with that back leg. I couldn't get mine to really do that. It was a, an interesting practice. I, I kept trying and trying. Eventually I got it, but when it went to the other side, I struggled so much to get that whole column of my body to really move in alignment with what she was practicing there. Beautiful, inhale, exhale, drop your knee back down. Good, release. Reaching your right arm, opposite arm up to the sky, the other arm reaches to your... Oh yeah, and I totally messed all this up. I wasn't quite sure where we were headed. You can see I have the wrong arm up. But that's okay, and that's okay. Whenever we approach these practices, it's okay. If you go to the left and they meant to the right, it's all right. As long as you're listening to your body, 
It's not a big deal. Like here, half Hanuman, I'm incredibly stiff. I'm incredibly stiff. So this movement, this back and forth movement of this half split just felt better to take in this way. And that's okay. Anytime that you're approaching any of these things, especially if you're doing this from a video that you find on YouTube or, or anywhere else, to try these practices and to see how it feels in your body and to take it at your pace. And she does a really lovely job. These are gorgeous flow sequences. Absolutely lovely. And then cartwheel the arms back down, step back into high plank position and give me a flow chaturanga. Upward face. Now I want to talk a minute about chaturanga. I do not instruct chaturanga. It is so much tension in the shoulders. It can really put you out of whack as far as if you already have underlying conditions. And because I work mostly with clients who are in recovery for their body, mind, spirit, and also they've had pre-existing conditions such as surgeries, they come to me looking for a deep relaxation and to find mo more mobility and fluidness within the joints. And I find that chaturanga in itself is, it can be very painful in the shoulders, especially if it's done slightly incorrectly or out of alignment. So for the review of this, I did chaturanga, but I typically wouldn't. I would have just lowered down knees, chest, and chin all the way down to the floor, a nice flat back, and then come up into a baby cobra just to protect, a little bit more protection. I'm a very busy person. I don't want to be out because I'm making alignment issues happen in my body throughout a practice. Exhale, release. So now let's find that stillness. Find that deep I did find that as we started to do our cool down, I was able to catch up. I did appreciate that there were these beautiful moments of stillness to really let that stretch do its work. There was quite a bit of strength and movement in here. Great for mobility, great for flexibility, and just building up warmth through the body. And exhale. Keep your left hand grounded. Reach your right arm up to the sky, adding... These twists are really fun too. If you get the opportunity to follow along with this particular practice, these twists are really fun, especially the half Hanuman twist, a lot firing up in a whole bunch of different places. My suggestion is that use a block for that supporting arm so you get a little bit more length through the torso. Exhale, lift the heels, bend your knees, now hop to the mat, sit down and begin to roll like a ball and then finding your navasana. So we roll back to the shoulders. This is playful. This was, <laughs> I wasn't really sure what I was doing here because it's hard to watch and roll at the same time. Um, but I think I got it. So this is like a boat pose, a little bit of engagement in the core. Of course, I fall down and uh, have a whole bunch of fun with that. So that was nice. And then there's these reverse tabletops. Just be super gentle with the cervical spine here. Um, again, she says, throw your head back. Please don't ever throw your head back. Just jut that chin out and then tip the chin up. If that even feels right. If not, keep that cervical spine nice and neutral. Maybe roll your chin and then open and extend into our final Shavasana corpse pose. Palms. And then we did get our Shavasana, which was fantastic, especially after such a fast paced workout here, such a fast paced practice. It was really nice to have a nice deep Shavasana. It didn't last very long, just a couple of moments. And then she says it, you can stay here as long as you like, which I highly, highly encourage. Stay there as long as it feels right for you. The idea that we have to jump up and go do something else it takes away from that transition and we miss this rebirth back into whatever it is that's going on in your day. So you miss that transition, which is really a healthy thing for your mind. Yoga is one of those wonderful practices where we get to control our transitions. Most of the time in life, we don't get much of a say over how we transition and move from moment to moment, or even task to task. It's kind of just thrown at us as we go. So using yoga as a way to actually practice intentional transitions in your day, in your moments, in your life is really nice. And I highly encourage 
I'd be really interested to hear about their trial program with their app. It looks absolutely gorgeous. The cinematography, the way that they use the camera, their voiceovers for the actual practice, it's beautiful. So if you're looking for that maybe totally immersive quality in your yoga practice where you kind of dim the lights and have this going and you're in whatever beautiful location they're in, that might be right up your alley. So that was fantastic. Um, all in all, I think the practice was a bit too quick, just too quick in the way that it's not that I can't do it. And I'm sure you can do it too. It's that it just takes my body a little bit longer to find alignment, to take a breath and find length. And so I think that overall, this was a, a beautiful practice. It was great sequencing. There were a few things in there, such as the pace. The pace was really quick. So I would just, if you are going to practice this, I would go at your own pace. If you miss a couple of postures, that's okay. Just take your time. Uh, overall, I think... I might have a few students who would really be interested in this, but overall, I think the pace just kind of keeps it from being more restorative and gentle for my particular client base, which is fine, totally fine. Again, absolutely gorgeous on that cinematography. So I would just check it out for that because they have nice transitions in their titles and she has a, a lovely way of teaching and I think it would be awesome to just check them out and get curious about that. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me and uh, watching me struggle through chaturanga and all these different postures that I don't do on a regular basis. And I really appreciate it. If you'd like me to review a certain practice that you have in your mind that you'd love to see me struggle through, which I absolutely will struggle through, you are more than welcome to add that down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm always looking to do new things and interact with you. And if there's something that I can do that would be helpful for you, please let me know. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me and have a warm and wonderful rest of your day.